Let's get back to why the slider doesn't work. As I mentioned earlier, it has something to do with SwiftUI state. If you've ever been to a restaurant where the sign or their website said they were open, only to find out they were actually closed when you tried to enter, you've experienced what happens when a user interface, which is the open sign, doesn't match the state, which is the place was actually closed. This is similar to the example we talked about earlier, where your card dashboard is broken, which might cause you to get a ticket or worse. This kind of problem happens when the user interface and the state aren't connected. In the restaurant example, keeping the open and close sign in sync with the restaurant's actual open and close state means that someone has to go and make sure that the sign is always providing the right information. If you've ever worked in the food service industry, you know that the kind of dedication and reliability needed to make sure that the sign is always right is rare. As we talked about earlier, you may have seen this sort of problem happen in software as well. As applications grow, their state becomes more complex, and it's all too easy to forget to update some part of the user interface when some state detail changes. Remember, SwiftUI was designed to solve the problem of the mismatch between the user interface and the application state. And one of the things that SwiftUI provides to help with this is something called bindings. Bindings are a fancy way of saying that a particular user interface view will always be tied to a particular state value. For example, in this video, you're going to learn how to bind the slider view to a state variable that stores the value of that slider. By doing this, every time you move the slider, the state variable will automatically be updated to match. And vice versa, if you update the state variable, the slider will also be up automatically updated. Effectively, they are bound together. Let's see how we can use SwiftUI bindings to solve the mystery of the slider. All right, so to keep track of the slider value, we need to create another state variable. So after this line where we created the alert is visible state variable, we'll write at state var, and we're gonna call this slider value and colon to say is a. And this kind, the slider value is not a bool, it's not a true false value, instead it's a double, which means it's a decimal point value. And we'll set this equal to an initial value of 50.0. All right, now that we have a state variable to keep track of the slider, we can create the slider in a slightly different way. So let's delete everything after slider, and in parentheses, let me back up. If I type the R in parentheses, I'll see different ways we can create the slider here. And we're gonna choose the option here that has a value and a range. So a value, which is a binding in a range. So I'm gonna select that. And so for the value, we want self dot, and then we want slider value. And again, we need to mark it with a dollar sign since it's a state variable. And then for the range, we're gonna start with one and put dot, 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 which means start from one and go up to and including 100. So what this means is whenever the slider value changes, it will automatically update the slider value variable that's in our class. And the range of acceptable values is from one to 100. Let's go ahead and give this a try. And you can see here that the slider used to be stuck over here at 100. Now it's at 50 instead. And the reason it's 50 is because we initialize it to 50. I can also move the slider. And as I move the slider under the hood, it's actually updating that slider value variable. 